Welcome all of you, the viewers of Spill on Daily Culture. My name is Maria Kondzielska and we take you to the details of the life of an artist because with me in the studio is Małgorzata Malinowska. Thank you very much for coming. Thank you. And you just came from one of your uh, exhibitions to us. But uh, what is interesting, you also uh, spend a lot of time in New York and in the US as an artist. Uh, tell us about this this time and in your life and how did it shape your career or your approach to art? <laughs> That's an interesting question. So basically living in New York is a completely different game than being back in to Warsaw. I like my city, Warsaw, but I love New York. And as an artist in New York, you have to struggle constantly, which is also like a drug. You always working wherever you go. And my story was that I did study there. I did a program which is called Studio Art Intensive for three years at the National Academy School, nicely located on the Fifth Avenue, overlooking Guggenheim Museum. The wow. school, yes, it was wonderful. So one of my studios, when I painted, I could see Guggenheim and guests going in and out. Oh, wonderful. So you basically were in the middle, uh, very in the city center, downtown. Yes. But we would joke with uh, fellow artists, fellow students, that we hardly ever go out because, you know, the studies were so intense that oh, we I would see. mainly stay in the studio. And then on the weekend, of course, you wanted to see the city, but all of us were on a on a sick of career. So whatever we did was, you know, going to galleries, uh, seeing exhibitions, going for openings. It was interesting. I love it. I really like it. But it's, of course, uh, US, I would say, uh, is a very, especially New York, uh, is a very essence of what is called competition. And especially for uh, artists as well, as uh, so people from all over the world who are trying to get a piece of bread <laughs> in here. And of course, it's extremely challenging because New York is also very expensive. Yes, very uh, much so. And there are so many talented people there as well. So, I mean, what was your experience? What was your approach? So my experience was, uh, funny enough, similar to what I experienced here in Warsaw. Uh, I would say I was popular among friends and friends of friends. People would buy my paintings, they would approach me and uh, commission something and buy what I already done. And, you know, I did not have much problem going by. Uh, but when it comes to an unofficial art market, I did not feel that I fit there. As we discussed um, previously, you and I, uh, nowadays art market is focused on abstract paintings, conceptual paintings. I have nothing against them, but my aesthetic, as you see, is completely different. It's very figurative. It's definitely. very figurative. And I want to be, I want, I want my things to be pretty and I'm not offended if they called pretty and beautiful. That's what I'm aiming for. I think I would much better fit in 1920s, I guess, in, in Paris for sure than nowadays. And it's similar New York art market beside the big names as Polish uh, art market for um, emerging artists that they very much focus on concept and I like to be I like to focus on beauty and but is it like this that concept is a lot for the critics and for the artists themselves but the public the the people uh, in the public as they are in their majority they are usually very much confused with the with the uh, yes uh, of, like abstract art and I'm myself even though I have at least a considerably quite a, a huge contact with lots of pieces of art uh, I'm always a little bit sometimes lost with the amount of energy I need to put in order to appreciate and understand the painting abstract painting it's like so much work and sometimes like do I want to really to put all of this work or do I just want to have a nice aesthetic experience on at least even at the basic level at the very end. And then if I want to continue and discovering what's the story behind, I go deeper. I understand you completely. And I would say I am more popular with public than with an official art market. I don't mind that. And I have people who are, I don't know, I would say junkie for my work. That's very nice of them. 
they 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 really so as long as you find buyers and so on you don't have to be that uh, I mean, the, the concern with the, uh, with the opinions of the critics, which they usually are shaped by a lot of things in the market. We know by even the houses but the, and the auctions that some of the painters sell better than the other. And it doesn't really depend on that. It I mean, there are a lot of factors taken into it. And advertisement is one of them as well, of course. Yes, of course. But, you know, artists are never satisfied. So it would be nice to be popular in all of the areas. And I, I hope that's coming. I, I, I'm sure the figurative paintings are going to become more and more popular, in my opinion, because the world is, is a funny game, you know. It, uh, so whenever there is, uh, I would say, it's like roulette. Once it's black, one is, once, it's, once it's red. And now when we were very much in topic of figurative, ab not figurative, abstract, conceptual, also surrealistic art, I'm sure the figurative art is coming back. It's been shown in art history for over centuries that it's usually this kind of fluctuation. Yeah, I fully agree. I hope. I also hope and keep my fingers crossed that the figurative art is back because I do like more. And to you, the viewers of Bill and Daily, uh, if you're fans of figurative art and especially the cheerful one, then definitely the Lolita uh, already a chain of paintings by Mogusha Maninoska is uh, devoted uh, for you and to you. And maybe it will end up in one of your bedrooms or living rooms. And thank you very much for watching Furlong Daily.